Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to another episode of Black Girl Creative. Maybe one day I'll actually have like a intro music <laughs> for this, but right now you just get me. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm happy that you're here. We're going to talk today about starting, right? A lot of us have dreams. A lot of us have visions and goals, and we see this big vision that we have for ourselves and we have no idea where to start. <laughs> we want to plan. We want to replan and go back and edit and try again and try to figure out the path that we need to take to win. And I'm here to tell you that sometimes you just got to start. Sometimes you just have to start because clarity comes from doing. We can do a lot of meditation. We can do a lot of planning, of ideating, of brainstorming, of I will do X, Y, and Z when X, Y, and Z happens, right? But the truth is we never really know what's going to happen. We don't know. You know, all we have is this moment. We can have like our intended things that we want to do. We can have our um, hoped for, you know, timelines and, and goals and all that other stuff. But the truth is that we have to take life as it comes, right? So we can over prepare and then be weighed down by our preparation to start. Just think about it. The more that you learn, the more you take in, the heavier you become. There's a scripture that says, um, too much knowledge is sorrowful. And this is me paraphrasing, of course. This is the Alicia version. Um, but too much knowledge brings sorrow, right? And, you know, that can, that, that can be applied to multiple things. But I also think about planning and how we like to plan and over plan and research and tear that thing apart. And by the time we're done researching, we're tired, we're exhausted, or we are deterred from our goal because now we feel like, oh, I don't have all the things I need. I don't have the certifications. I don't have the experience. I don't know what I'm doing, right? And we see that I don't know as a, a deterrent, as I said, as a reason to not do the thing. We get weighed down. It becomes a burden, all the stuff that we're learning. And so that burden becomes heavy and keeps us in one place. There's a scripture I like to think about um, when I'm in that mood where I'm just like over researching and over preparing. Um, and it is the story where Jesus is telling the disciples to go into the nations and go preach the gospel, essentially. Right. And so the people are asking like, yo, where will we eat? What are we going to wear? Where are we going to lay our heads at night? Right. Like, Jesus, you telling us to go. Where are we going to go? Like, how are we going to take care of ourselves? And Jesus basically said, don't worry about it. You will be taken care of when you get there. Right. And so I've read that story a million times, but it wasn't until recently over the past few years. And I've referenced this before um, in my work. But over the past few years, I realized like, wow, there really is freedom in not knowing. There really is freedom in just starting. There really is a lightness that comes with the bravery to start and to start messy and imperfect and to not know what you're doing, but still try and do right to, to learn as you go, as opposed to waiting until you reach some sort of made up mark to say, okay, now I can start. Now it's the perfect time. Now I am the perfect person. Perfection, perfectionism got us all in a chokehold. <laughs> We're, we're even afraid to start off something new, some like we're afraid to do something we don't even know how to do, knowing we don't know how to do it, afraid of showing up imperfect. But it's like, you know that you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> right? So why are we not having grace with ourselves? Shout out to Coach Yolanda. Um, I, I watched her video recently um, about inner child healing, about justice. And one thing that she said was every time that we start something new, we are children again, right? Like we are like a child. Meaning when a child is growing up, when a baby is born and it's learning how to walk, right? We're cheering that baby on like, yes, come on and walk. Even though the baby might fall, the baby might wiggle and wobble and hold on and cruise, hold on to the, you know, the couch and, you know, the, the drawers and the dresser and the TV stand. And we're cheering this baby on. It isn't perfect. The, the, the legs are bowed, right? They're wobbly. They're not sure, but they're smiling because we are reflecting to them that what you're doing is a good thing. Right. But with ourselves, when we try something new, we are reflecting back to ourselves that we suck, that we're awful, that what we're doing is stupid and silly. And we don't give ourselves enough grace to show up imperfectly, to show up and be like, I don't know what I'm doing. But what if we gave ourselves permission to not know? What if we said to ourselves, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to start anyway and figure it out. If we went into our thing with that weight taken off of us to have to know everything, to know what we're doing, to be looked at as perfect or like a like an expert of some sort. If we walk into things as a student of life, 
as a student to our creativity. I don't care how many songs I have sung. I am always learning. I'm always trying something new. I am not an expert. And that frees me. <laughs> like that frees me to be able to be like, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. So the first thing I want to say to you is it's okay to do it messy. It's okay to do it unsure. It's okay, again, to cruise like the baby does before they start walking. It's okay to fall on your butt. <laughs> it's okay to fall on your face. All of these are signs of life. All of these are signs that you're trying, that you are learning. Because when a baby falls, right, the baby learns like, oh, maybe I don't need to walk like this. Or maybe I don't need to, you know, hold on to that thing because it might fall on me or, you know, whatever it is. Like babies learn as they go and we applaud them in the learning. But with ourselves, we're so mean to ourselves. We deny ourselves. It's almost like we're hypocrites. We tell children, you're allowed to do X, Y, and Z, right? And then as we grow up, we feel this pressure, oftentimes not given, not, not um, formed by our own opinions, but given to us by other people. We're told by other people that unless we show up correct, unless we know what we're talking about, unless, you know, we have practiced our 10,000 hours, then we don't deserve to be seen or celebrated. But the thing is like how, it's almost like when you're applying for a job and they say, oh, you don't have enough experience. Well, how am I going to, how am I get experience if you don't hire me? Right? You're putting this pressure on yourself like, oh, well, I'm not perfect. Well, how are you going to, I'm not even going to say perfect. How are you going to improve or to get closer to your style of art if you don't practice? We're so afraid of showing up because we're afraid of being seen imperfectly. We're, we're afraid of being seen as not put together and, you know, be seen as like, we don't know what we're doing. But it's also okay if we don't know what we're doing until we figure out what we know what we're doing. <laughs> It's okay to get started and be like, you know what? I have no idea. And still, I show up. And still, I'm going to do, right? Start messy. Be okay with making a messy first draft. Be okay with always being in beta mode, right? Like we're just testing things out and seeing how things go. Be okay with being an experimenter, a learner of life, a student of life, right? It's okay to not have all the answers to start. You don't need them because you will find the answers as you go. And this is the thing I also want to say, right? Some answers, some things that work for other people might not work for you. So we are doing all this studying, which is wonderful. We're doing all this studying. And what it really is, is fear. What it really is, is that we don't want to be blindsided. We don't want to be taken by surprise. So we study other people who are doing similar things, which makes sense. And also I encourage this because it also shows you what's possible, but I don't want you to get stuck and trapped in their story like you're not living your own story because you're following theirs and you're looking at their life as a map, but it's not. Their life, again, is an example of what is possible, right? It's an example of, it's, 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 it's an invitation for us to expand our thinking, to expand our imagination, to dream a little further, right? But every person's path is different. So even if what you're doing doesn't look like what other people are doing, it doesn't mean that it's a fail. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. It also doesn't mean that you're off track, right? You got to stick it out long enough to figure out your path, to find your path. I think we do both, right? Like we step in the, in the footsteps of the people who came before us, but at some point we, we veer off into our own lane, into our own, um, into our own living, right? So going back to the example of children, they mirror what they see their parents do, right? Walking, standing tall, running, right? And their gait might even mirror what their parents' gait looks like at first. You know what I'm saying? But eventually they come into a style all their own. They walk a certain way that looks, looks exactly like them. You know what I mean? They have a certain style about them that looks exactly like them. As children, we look at our parents as a mirror, like, oh, you you are the person that takes care of me. You're the person that loves me. You're the person who I look like, right? Like, so I'm, I'm looking at you as a model of what is possible. I'm looking at you as an example of what is possible. But at some point, every child starts to push back against that authority, push back against this idea this of, of who we should be, right? We start rebelling. We start veering our own way, pushing the boundaries of things, trying to figure out life on our own. And all of that is healthy, even though it's very angsty and like, I'm sure to parents, it could be heartbreaking, right? Um, because you're kind of mourning like, oh, well, you know, we used to get along so well, but it's like, it's not even personal. It's just that your, your child is figuring out who they are. And it's the same way with our creative process. We are looking to the people who inspire us and encourage us as models of what is possible, 
stepping in their footsteps. And then at some point we look to the left or to the right and be like, oh, wow, what would happen if I went over this way? Right? And we start to go that way. And then we create our own path and then somebody else comes behind us and steps in our footsteps and then they veer their own way. So then we have this map of like limitless possibility, this map of the footsteps of people who either have inspired us or the people that come after us, right? In our own path, in our own path, and our own path will, will evolve and will become what it is over time. So we can do all this planning and preparation, but we're never really prepared for what happens. We cross the bridges when we get there and we don't want to be weighed down by knowing too much, carrying too much, right? Concerning ourselves with too much. You know, we worried about, you know, stuff that we haven't even approached and we have to worry about today. And I'm going to use this as an example. I was a photographer um, professionally for many years and um, I, when I, when I was so like in love with photography, I did all these deep dives. I studied, I followed all these photographers. I did what they did. I edited like they edited, right? And I was concerning myself with, you know, oh, I need this lens and all that. And I'm like, girl, you haven't even practiced finding your own style yet, your own eye. You don't even have your own eye yet. You're taking pictures of what you think people want to see. And we got to talk about that too. I'm going to come back and circle around that for that conversation. But we're taking pictures of what we think people want to see. I am, you know, editing photos, how people say you should edit photos, right? Not really giving my space room and time to experiment. And this is the beautiful thing about being a beginner is that there is no pressure. There's no pressure, right? You're allowed to be a kid. When you're a kid, you're experimenting, you're playing, you're all over the place, you're drawing on walls, right? You're testing the limitations. You're seeing what can happen. In the beginning, I'm so glad that I didn't have the money for all the lenses and all the things because all I had was a kit lens on my camera. And with that lens, I created works of art. I had so much fun. I experimented. I played. I took pictures of my friends and all the things that I loved, right? I put down the pressure of being a great photographer or whatever the heck that meant for other people and just allowed myself to be a good Alicia, (laughs) right? To to take pictures of stuff that I want to see, to communicate what I want to communicate. And I, I think that's, we we get the tools from other people, but we determine how we want to use those tools to create certain things. And that's the beautiful thing, right? Not concerning yourself with the heavy stuff too early is beneficial for you. Because if you do concern yourself with the stuff like, oh, what will I do when X, Y, and Z? You don't even know if you're going to get there, right? I, <laughs> again, going back to this photography example, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be this kind of photographer. Hopefully I can go to school and study it, right? And then years into it, I realized I didn't even like the path that I was on. I was a wedding photographer um, and I hated it, hated it. It wasn't so much about taking pictures of the bride and groom and the family. That was my favorite part, like just seeing people interact. It was the demanding hours. It was dealing with the people. It was me low-key playing wedding planner, and that's not really my job. It was people disrespecting me and you know, standing in front of the camera while I'm trying to take pictures. It was a mess. Like it just, it just wasn't, it just wasn't giving what I thought it was gonna give. And then I went back. I retreated off that path. Like, actually, this is not the direction I want to go. I retreated and I pivoted. And I went in a different direction. And the style of photography that I found that I loved was more of a journalistic approach, was more of a um, lifestyle approach, meaning I just love capturing the beauty of everyday life. I don't want to do all this heavy editing. I don't want to do all this stuff because that's not really that's not really lined up with the kind of person that I am. I want people to see themselves beautiful because they are beautiful, right? Not because I Photoshopped them or not because I edited them. And it, there's nothing wrong with editing, by the way. There's nothing wrong with makeup and all this other stuff, right? But for me, for me, I didn't like it. I didn't like the work that it took to do that either because I didn't even I didn't even feel good about the end product. It was just kind of like, this is what people want to see themselves as, as opposed to them seeing themselves and it broke my heart. So I retreated and I went in a different direction, right? And in my life, there are so many different things that look like false starts, So many things that I look back on in shame a little bit because I'm like, dang, I started that thing and I put it down. I picked this up and I put it down. I started this project and I put it down. And I can see those things as failures, right? Or I can see them as baby steps, as those wobbly steps, you know, the the getting started and then realizing, actually, I want it to be something else, right? And And I'm open to whatever my vision turns out to be in the end. Because I know, this is another thing I wanna say to you, how you start is not always how you finish. What your dream looks like in the beginning may not be what your dream is at the end. And it's not wrong, it's beautiful. 
right? The dream, again, seeing someone doing something that we want to do is the marker, is the invitation. Like, hey, come on this journey with me. Follow in my footsteps, right? The dream, the initial dream that we have gets us started, gets us moving. And then at some point we say, hmm, I want to see what this happens if I trust myself, if I change this thing, if I edit this thing, if I put this down, if I do something different, right? And then we go on to our own things. That's not a fail. You picking up something and putting it down is not a failure. It is not you being scatterbrained. It is not you being undisciplined or not committed or not motivated. Sometimes our dreams change. Again, going back to the photography model as an example, right? Like I'm looking at these photographers. I'm like, oh my God, like this is exactly what I want to do. I want to do high fashion. I want to edit very well. And then I'm, I'm, I'm doing these things and I'm realizing this is not making me happy. This is not bringing me joy. And in those moments, I was losing it. Like, I was just like, I'm wasting so much time. And, you know, people are asking me, demanding me, you know, oh, well, what are you going to do? What exactly are you doing? They're demanding that I know. And I'm like, I'm a child in this. I'm a baby in this. I don't know what I'm doing. That's like asking a one-year-old what they're going to do for the rest of their life. First of all, do they even have a grasp of language, right? A full grasp of the language. (laughs) That's the first question. But also they're one years old or they're one year old. I never also, by the way, is it one year old or one years old? Y'all help me. Anyway, (laughs) I think it's one year. But anyway, they're one year old, right? It just feels wrong to say. Okay, go back. (laughs) But it's just just wrong to ask a one year old, like, hey, what are you finna do for the rest of your life? They don't even have a grasp of what what life even is, of who they are. And so to demand yourself to know exactly what you're doing in the beginning is cruel. It's unkind to yourself. And take the pressure off of your thing to be this fully developed thing in the beginning, this fully developed idea in the beginning, this fully fleshed out, like step-by-step, one-by-one process, because sometimes we figure out the process as we go. That's the beautiful thing about this journey is that it's unfolding as we step into it, right? Life is not, life is laid before us, but we can't see it. And I think that's the beautiful thing. But a lot of times we see that as an inconvenience. We see that as, um, as, an invitation to feel fear, which I get because what, what is fear except, oh, I don't have experience in this thing, right? Like that's fear. Like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of being let down. It's the fear could be like, oh, I tried something new before and y'all clowned me or y'all made fun of me or these people left me or I embarrassed myself, right? So we know what we've experienced before with trying something new. But I think that sometimes we have to change our perspective from, oh, I'm doing something wrong. I'm not safe to no, this is actually where I'm supposed to be. Like, this is actually perfect. Me not knowing what I'm doing is the perfect place for me to be right now. You being in a place of not knowing is a beautiful place, is a holy place, is a sacred place. You being in a place where you're just kind of open is a trusting place. It takes bravery to step into the field and be like, yo, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm finna plant some seeds anyway. I'm gonna figure it out as I go. It takes bravery to step into something without knowing what the full picture looks at looks like. It takes, again, trust, faith. It takes a deep spiritual knowing that you're gonna be okay, that you're gonna figure it out. It takes trust in yourself. It, tra- it takes trust in God. It takes trust in your community to be able to be like, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing, but I believe in myself enough to to know that I can learn what I need to do. And what I need to do, I don't need to explain to other people. I don't need to over explain. You know what I'm saying? Especially the people who want to misunderstand you in the first place, right? There was a comment left on one of my videos. It has since been deleted, but um, it just rubbed me the wrong way. A person was basically saying that they've been following me for a while. And one of the projects that I had been doing was 10 years old, Right. And in that moment, I was really triggered and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, why am I so bothered by this? Like, what, what is it, Alicia? Let's get to the root of it, right? Um, for, for a lot of reasons, this person, this person said that they follow me for years. And I'm just like, and basically said to me like, oh, why are you always behind on your projects? Like, maybe, maybe it's not about comparison. Maybe it's about you. Like, maybe you're the problem, essentially. And no, <laughs> Um, I, I immediately, the first, the first feeling I had was, dang, have I not done anything? Like maybe I'm not as accomplished. And immediately, no, let me check these things. Is this fact? When these, when these thoughts are coming up, when people are planting seeds of doubt in my head, I need to interrogate them things immediately. I need to intercept those thoughts. So I intercepted and I said, what have I done? Alicia, you have put on 25 
25 musical projects. You have done, you have launched, what is it? Um, five podcasts or, or four podcasts. You put out five books. Like you've been doing work. And all the work that I'm doing, all the different iterations of that project, it has taken me 10 years to get to where I am right now. And I don't have no shame about that. I own that. I look back on them 10 years, 10 years like, dang, Alicia, you did that. <laughs> you did that. You pick stuff up. You try things on. You said, no, nah, this doesn't really fit me. You tried to be like other people. And you were like, no, actually, I like myself better. <laughs> right? Like that takes bravery. And there will always be somebody on the sideline, in the crowd, having some criticism to offer when they themselves are too afraid to try anything anyway. Like they're, they're demanding from me, they're demanding from me explanation. They're demanding from me explanation to see me as valid, to validate me, to validate the time it's taking me. And instead of approaching that with like, you know, beating myself up or, you know, fussing them out, I'm just like, you know what, that's not even my problem. Like that's how you view yourself, right? And so for me, I know my truth. I know that I... I know that I am on a journey to being the most authentic and integral version of myself. And that means sometimes I put, pick, pick stuff up and put it down because it no longer fits me. Also, I am not the same person I was 10 years ago, <laughs> right? Like 10 years ago, I was 23. I was still in college. I was in a very different place in life. I didn't even know that this was possible, right? I didn't know that it was possible to start my own podcast. I didn't know that anybody wanted to hear anything that I had to say. I was in a very different place in my mindset. I was in a very dark place. I didn't want to live when I was 23 years old. Like, (laughs) not even about the creative stuff, like just life in general. How dare someone tell me that what I'm doing is not legitimate or is not enough or that somehow I, I, that somehow I am, uh, I am obligated and required to justify my living. I am not. I am not. And I am so grateful to be able to be held sacred and in community with people who get it, right? Like, so this, this rubbed me the wrong way. It triggered some things in me, but I also think it triggered me because I went through life feeling like I wasn't enough because I was picking up things and putting them down and people couldn't put their finger on me, right? When we're, when, we're, when, we're, when we're in school, we're told that we have to know what we're doing all the time. We have to, you know, have a clear vision and oh, where are you going to go to college? What career do you want to do? And I'm a late bloomer in that I give myself time. What, what do I want to nurture myself with? What do I want to try and put down and pick up, right? Like giving myself room to be a baby again, <laughs> giving myself room to be a child again, to start something new, to be bad at something. That's scary. People don't want to be bad at stuff. I don't want to be bad at stuff. It's not fun. <laughs> I'm not going to fake like it is, right? But it's an exercise and it's an exercise of faith. It is also a, allow myself to be bad at things is also a, uh, an act of love toward myself to say, Alicia, I still love you. I still support you. You're still worthy of trying new things. You're still worthy of being brand new at something. Your worth is not tied up in you being an expert. Your worth is not tied up in you doing the same thing for 10 years. And God bless those who do. I think that's wonderful for y'all. I am not that person. I am on my own path and I will reroute. I will backtrack. I will pick up. I will put down as many times as I need to, to figure out where I need to be. I don't owe anyone an explanation. I don't owe anyone anything. Actually, (laughs) I don't owe anyone. Actually, me showing up here and sharing this brings me joy. (laughs) It makes me happy. I'm doing the things that feel that I feel called to do in my soul. And, um, and at first I responded to this person and I, you know, and I was explaining myself and, and I realized I don't feel like explaining myself anymore. Explaining myself to people who are set on misunderstanding me or judging me, right. Is not, is not for me. It's not for me no more. If you want to misunderstand me, that's okay. You do that right? I'm going to be free. I'm going to be making things. I'm going to be in community. I'm going to be loving on people. Like I said, loving, even though the iterations, the way that I show up, that's another thing. What has, what has always been clear to me, I've always wanted to love people for a living. I didn't know how that was going to look. I didn't know what was going to become of it. That's just what I felt. I feel, I feel called to love people, to create space for people, right? To wrap people up in a hug, you know, not physically, but like in space, in creation, like in making things. Like I want people to leave me better than when they came. Like that is, that is my, that is my heart. Like I want people to know that they are loved, that they are enough, 
that they are beautiful, that they, I want them to be able to see what we have been blinded to. We have been taught that we are not enough. And I want people to learn that they are, even as I am learning, right? And so I share my heart, I share my life, not out of obligation, but because I like to. I like to. It's what I'm called to. And some people are not called to that. And that's okay. But you don't get to judge me because I'm on my path. <laughs> like I'm shaking right now. Because it really upset me. And what upsets me, upsets, upsets me even more is that there are people, if you're talking to me like this, you talk to yourself like this. And I want you to be free. Free from other people's opinions or where you should be in life. Free from, you know, these, these expectations that people put on you. Free from all this stuff that keeps us bound and keeps us harming other people. Because we don't see ourselves as enough. That comment had nothing to do with me and that's why I deleted it. It had nothing to do with me. Because those who are actually concerned with my journey know what's going on. Because they keep themselves abreast <laughs> with what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Um, then Whatever. I have other thoughts. I'm going to come back to that at a different time. But don't allow qu comments and questions like this and, you know, people putting their expect their own expectations on you. Don't allow that to stop you from doing, from trying. I know what we're trying to do. We're trying to over, you know, study and over research so that we look valid to other people. So we get permission from other people to do the thing, to be a beginner. So that we, that we, the other people look at us and say, you know what, what you're doing is legit. Thumbs up to you. We want the stamp of approval from other people. Sometimes that's not going to come until they can see a proof of concept. And sometimes that's not going to come even when they get the proof of concept. Some people will never be satisfied, but that's still not enough reason for you not to do your thing, to not create. It's not. It's not worth it. I want you to walk into your creative journey just being open. I want you to be open to surprise and to the journey, right? I want you to have an open mind, an open heart, and an open hand. Leave room for the magic in your life. Your life is magical. Your life is a masterpiece coming together in real time. Of course, you can't see the whole picture. You're still alive. You're still alive. And oftentimes it's not until we're on the other side of something or until we're doing something new and be like, okay, that's why I needed to do that. That's why my soul felt compelled to do this thing. And that's why I followed through and tried it. Not because I was trying to be perfect, but because I needed that experience to get me to where I am, right? So even going back to that example of Jesus and the disciples, right? This this story, when you're when you're talking about going through your journey, there are so many things that we are carrying that are weighing us down. I imagine that Jesus told them, don't carry all that stuff because it's going to exhaust you, right? It's going to stop you from going certain places. You're going to worry about like, I don't have enough, like what's going on? And again, we'll talk about scarcity mindset in a different episode, but because of trauma, we have scarcity mindset. It's not just like, oh, it's something that was implanted. It's like, no, I know what scarcity feels like and I don't want to feel that again, right? So I'm validating that, that experience. But if we're walking and carrying all this heavy stuff, we get burdened. We get exhausted. It's better to stay light. It's better to stay open, to not have your hands so tightly wound around something and demanding that it work out exactly the way that you want it to. Because even if you, even if the iteration, even if the way that you're showing up or sharing art or whatever is different, the intent and the heart behind it can still be the same. Hold on to that. Hold on to that vision. Hold on to that, right? Like however it shows up, that's how it shows up. And even if it shows up differently than what you thought it needs to show up as, right, it's still valid and it's still impactful. I always wanted to sing and I always wanted to love on people. I did not know those two things could mesh together. And I'm singing love letters for people now, right? I had no idea. I could not see that far 10 years ago. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know that it was okay to be myself. I didn't feel safe. Right. I had all these expectations of other people 10 years ahead. Right. I am freer than I've ever been. I am more clear about who I am. Right. And I still have yet to become clearer. Right. But it only becomes clearer as I move. There's a quote that people use for this example. And they say things like, oh, you can't move a sitting car or something like that. Right. It's easier to turn or to steer the bus in a different direction when it's moving. Meaning you can't. Like when you're moving and doing something, then you can move and turn in and, you know, turn around and navigate to a different place, right? But when you're in the same spot, you can't even see what's ahead. You can only see so far. You can only see so far. 
right? You have to get moving. It's harder to push the to push the bus to keep going. Once you have momentum, then it's easier to turn. Then it's easier to pivot. Then it's easier to make better decisions because you're in the practice of hearing yourself and believing yourself and trying things. You're in the practice of faith and trust. Not in the practice of overanalyzing, criti- criticizing yourself for not being who you think you need to be, right? All of that energy is very stagnant, is very uh, destructive, but if we get in a place where I am, I am perfect exactly where I am, I am okay. I am all right, right? And also understanding that how I start might not be how I finish. Your dreams are a guide, but they might be guiding you to where you cannot see yet. We need to let go of control and allow it to evolve as you create. Let the new vision come to life. Stop fighting it. That thing you know that you don't want to do anymore. Stop fighting it. Put it down. Listen to your soul. Listen to your body. Listen to your heart. It knows. It knows. That thing you want to put down, the thing you want to try, the thing you want to research, that person you want to contact, that show you want to go to, right? You don't have to have a why right now. You don't. You don't have to have a why that makes sense to other people or even makes sense to you. Let it be that this is what my spirit is saying that I should do, and so I'm going to do it. As long as it's not causing harm to anybody, what harm could it cause? What harm can come of it if you listen to yourself? Maybe you discover something new. Maybe you meet someone new. Our spirit is always speaking to us, y'all. So in conclusion, (laughs) this was a long way to say that if you don't know what you're doing, God bless. You're in a great place. You're in a great place. (laughs) If you don't know where you are, perfect. If you are following the footsteps of other people right now, wonderful. But keep your eyes open to what calls out to you when you feel ready to pivot or move or do something different. Stay open to that thing. There's nothing wrong with being a beginner. There's nothing wrong with not knowing what you're doing. You are in the perfect place. But just start. Get started. What is, and this is the question for you, right? Because I don't want to end every episode where you're just like, yeah, that was great for you. An action step. What is the smallest, and I mean the smallest, what is the smallest next best action that you can take. Maybe for you, it's writing down what you actually feel. You don't like that thing anymore. Maybe you need to mourn it. Maybe you need to grieve it. Maybe you need to, uh, you know, address the fact that you're scared because you don't know what you're doing. You just know you don't want to do this and you don't know what's going to happen, right? Maybe it is that you're fatigued from over studying and over researching. Maybe you just need to do something already to try and allow that to be your own research because doing and trying is research too. Falling and failing, using air quotes failing, is research too. That counts too. You're you're only seeing research in a safe way, right? You want to research in a safe way, in a way that you don't have to be nicked or, um, you know, in a way that you don't have to feel those things, in a way that you don't have to experience it. You're trying to live vicariously through other people or, you know, follow the right directions. You know, like just how they did in school. If you do X, Y, and Z, if you do this paper, you you come up with this answer or this, if they, you come up with this equation, right? The answer to this equation, you're right. You're correct. But life is messier than that. Life is so much more expansive than that. And even that, owning that we have that much control and that much uh, create like creative license in our lives can be scary to a person who has been told their whole lives what to do and what is right and what is wrong. But you are not wrong. You're not harming nobody. You just want to create. You just want to be. You just want to love. You just want to breathe. Why don't you deserve that? Why wouldn't you deserve that? I'm here to tell you, you do. You do. And I see you. I celebrate you. Because it's not easy trying new things. (laughs) It's not easy making yourself vulnerable to other people and other people's criticisms. It's not easy. But it's worth it. And even though I have been creating for a minute at this point, I am nearing, again, closing out my seventh year of being a full-time artist, right? Even though it has been scary, it has been arduous, it has been, I mean, downright, (laughs) downright brutal sometimes, I'll be honest with y'all. Like, life for me ain't been no crystal stair, okay? But for real, like, the, the process has not been clear or clean in any way, but it has been beautiful. When I soften and allow it's beautiful. When I allow my life to lead me, when I when I follow my my intuition, when I when I'm trusting in God, when I'm trusting in my peers, trusting in in my elders, when I'm doing all that stuff, trusting in nature, trusting in spirit, trusting in like just life. It feels so good. It feels so free. Like I am co-creating a beautiful life for myself. 
And I want this for all people. I want it for all people. So I love you. <laughs> I hope that you were able to get something from this. I, I implore you. I am, I don't want to say challenge, but I am asking you. I have one ask. If you can take one small step forward, what would be the next bravest step that you can take? Enough research, enough trying to plan, enough. You've done enough. You have done your due diligence. You know all the things that could go wrong. Do you know what could go right? Have you tried yourself? Have you tried using yourself? Have you tried using this as an experiment to see what it is you actually like? Take the pressure off of it if it has to be successful or not in your own eyes. A success is a try. You can't control what's going to happen. You can only plant the seeds and pray. That's it. And that was all your responsibility the whole time. Not making other people understand you, not, you know, passing a test, none of that. It's just you living. It's the living, okay? I see you. I celebrate you. You are good. You are enough. You have done enough. Take the next brave step. Take it. I have some things coming down the pike that I'm really excited to share with you. I'll, you know, we're getting closer to the holiday time. I don't want to like rush it or push it. Um, but I do, I do have things coming that I don't know. I don't know what it is. You know, I, it's just something. <laughs> and it might just start with one event. It might just start with an email or a phone call or a text message, right? But I'm open to where my dreams are leading me because my dreams are my guide. The dreams that I've been given are for are for me for a reason, right? It might not be to see that thing all the way through, to be completely honest with you, right? Like the like the photography example I gave, but it might be just to get me moving. Like, oh, I can see that over yonder. Let me start moving. And then actually when I'm in the present, when I'm doing the thing, oh, actually, I want to go this way instead. Thank you so much to this monument that that helped to lead and guide me and to get me started, right? So for you, what is that thing? What is that monument? What is that thing that you're looking to? And how can you step into the footsteps of, of other people? And if you are already stepping, is there anything that's calling to you that say, actually, I want to do this thing? You know what is a good prompt? Whatever you criticize is an opportunity for you to create something. Criticism is an opportunity for creation. If there's something you don't like or someone you don't like or a way that someone doesn't do something, do it in your own way. It's an invitation for you to create. Okay, so I see you. I love you. And I will talk to you all in the next episode. Keep creating, y'all, because what you create, what you do, how you show up, all of it, you matter. All right, y'all, later.